Well, we're back to work on our little elvish sword here. And now that the forging and the heat treating and the grinding and the polishing are done, or pretty much done, it's time to turn our attention to the fittings, meaning the handle. Now creating the fittings on a sword is where you will expend way more than half of the effort on the whole project and have probably about half of the opportunities to make a catastrophic mistake. So pay attention. The handle of a sword consists of a guard or quillens as they're called, the handle itself and the pommel which serves as a counterweight behind your hand when you are actually using the sword. The handle on this sword will be made of ironwood, but the pommel and the quillens are both Damascus steel, like the blade itself. Now first up is the pommel. There are about a hundred layers in this piece, roughly. And I get the initial shape right at the Chambersburg. Once it is rounded up, then I taper the end by hand with a bottom tool on the anvil so that it will fit into the one inch ball clapper die back under the Chambersburg. Anytime you are manipulating pattern welded steel this drastically, changing the shape this profoundly, you better put it through a lot of welding cycles and always remember to work at a high heat. Now the pommel threads onto the tang of the sword. So I need to center a longitudinal hole right down the center line of this pommel and then tap some threads. Now sadly the drilling did not go perfectly and I had a disaster with a quarter inch tap because as it turned out I did not anneal the piece completely. I didn't fully soften it and so as a result the hole was hard to drill and the tap broke off but I managed to save it after all. Now before I can really start in on the quillens or guard, I need to upset a piece of Damascus to a considerably heavier cross section. I've got to make it shorter and fatter. Now when you're doing this, or really anything with Damascus steel, like I said, high heat and small movements are important. Then some half blows at the edge of the anvil to define the shape. Carefully, and I mean carefully, lay out the center line and mark it. And then pay attention when you start the slit from both sides. Once the slit is through the piece and everything lines up, it's time to drift it. And I have learned that once the hole is about 90% drifted, if I use the sword tang itself to enlarge that slot the last little bit, it will save a ton of filing.
So ironwood is just a great choice for a handle because it is stable, it is super hard, and it takes an awesome polish without any sealer at all, just the wood itself. I'm etching all of these pieces with ferric chloride that has had a little bit of copper dissolved in it. Never forget that it's critically important to have every bit of the oil cleaned off of the steel before you put it in the etchant. Now overall, I am pleased with the way this sword turned out. I think if I was going to do it again, I would be careful of two or three things. First. I would fully anneal all of the fittings, especially the pommel, before I drilled it and tapped it. I think I might try a slightly narrower profile on the blade, and I would leave all of the pieces in the etchant just a little longer. Now you may have watched this video and thought, yeah, nice sword, okay, but what is the point? Those things are 100% useless in this day and age. Well, you are mostly correct about that, but not completely. Every summer, right here in Southern Oregon, there is a Highland Games Festival, and there is a sword course included in the Edged Weapons Contest, which, by the way, my friend Cy Swan developed and dominated here for a long, long time. Most of the swords these guys are using are handmade, and I'm telling you, it is good, clean fun. Going to an event like this is a great way to be reminded about the luxuries that we enjoy in the 21st century that our forefathers could never have imagined and that we almost uniformly take for granted. I always leave these types of events feeling grateful. And if you needed an excuse to make yourself a sword, here it is. Thanks for watching Essential Craftsman and keep up the good work.